and Lori, we're at the Sacred Playground, and this is my first time being here. I'm excited to know why you did it, how you did it, what's it for, and what's this whole thing all about. So tell me the story. Yeah, man, it's been a long time coming for us. About three years, the, the dream has been manifesting, and um, we're finally today at a place where we're able to share with you and uh, a few other select friends that we've invited. Uh, it's been a lot of work, long days, a little bit of stress, lots of love, lots of nurturing between the two of us to make sure we get here together. Um, it's been a big test of our relationship for sure. Um, and, uh, and we're here winning, so it's, we're excited. We're very excited to have you here, so thanks for coming. Lori, how does it feel to finally have people coming over in a, a semi-event kind of atmosphere and whatnot? Like, how, how does it feel to finally have it done? Oh, yeah. Um, it feels vulnerable um, because I've really, we've really made this place our home. Um, so to share it uh, feels really exciting and nerve wracking because it's something, it's a place that's become my refuge and my sanctuary. Um, but with that, I'm really excited to share the place that makes me feel like home and makes me feel as an empowered woman and, and safe to be in my own skin. So I'm really excited to share it with the community and see how this land can impact um, our community. That's heavy. Like that's like <laughs> tra transformational type stuff. So um, obviously this thing, this thing runs deep for you. This isn't, you're just opening a restaurant in Guiones and cranking out food and trying to get volume. Uh, talk us through, like, we're sitting right now in what's going to be the restaurant if I understand it right. Talk us through the vision and the areas and what all this place entails, if you would. Yeah, just leading off what Lori said too, um, it's not just a restaurant. This is, this is a place where we want people to come and, and ground and, and drop in and, and feel what it's like to be in authentic Costa Rica, and encompassed in the mountains, we're in the valley here, close to the river, um, and just come back to nature. Uh, we're growing our own food here, so we're trying to use everything from the garden for the food that we're going to be putting on the plates here. So um, the true farm to table setup. The best we can and when we can, you know, and obviously it's going to be impossible to do all of the things, um, but that's what life's about is kind of just doing your best with what you got, and we're going to continue to grow new things, and that'll be the menu will change all the time because there'll be certain things that are in season. Sometimes they won't be, so um, that's exciting. And then it's, it's, a, it's a place where you can come and spend time. It's not an in and out. It's going to be, you know, we're going to probably maximize, maxim, maximize it at, or maximize. Ma maximize. maximize the amount of people at 15. The maximum amount of people will be 15 people. Um, so it's an intimate, it's an intimate dining experience and an event that you get to come and spend the day and jump in the pool and use the playground, which we'll see after. Um, pick the food from the greenhouse yourself. Um, and just really spend some time and, and relax and, and enjoy. Who had the idea for this place first? Or was this a blending? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I hit a tough button there. Not at all. Yeah. So who had the idea for this first? Or was it a blending of kind of ideals and one thing led to another? I'm interested in hearing that. I'd love to hear Lori. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was definitely a blend. Um, we brought different components yeah at the same time you know i couldn't do this without her i couldn't do this <laughs> without her because she she brings certain component components that i can't do and i bring certain components that she can't do and that's the beauty of the relationship is bringing those two get those two things together and having this magical uh place that we created together um that's it yeah go ahead so laura you thought of it first <laughs> no i did not i did not think of it first um buying the land was Mike's idea and it it came because um of that group thing you talked about earlier so. well no we actually were talking about the end of the world and <laughs> 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 so he wanted to make sure that we had a safe place to live and and then we then started to talk about growing food for the restaurant um and then yeah once we found this land it started to evolve because both of us are intuitive and empathic and we're receiving messages from this land that it's more than just a place to offer food it's a safe place for people to be in their bodies and be in their lives and remember what it feels like to connect with nature and with themselves and with play this this land is a huge portal of play and healing and um we often forget as adults, in my perspective, um, 
to prioritize joy and prioritize play and um yeah this place has brought so much play into our lives and we want to share that with adults and kids let me ask it to you this way for people who hear the word sacred playground that's there's some hippie in there but then (laughs) (laughs) there's also a playground which is kind of interesting um who could come here and enjoy the place like for example when you say playground do you mean someone sitting uh on a balanced beam with incense oming or is there like a playground where they actually like run around like talk us through what you mean as far as activities and the whole experience and who could enjoy this place is it just a certain yogic type of mindset or could your standard visitor come and benefit from this place as well um, so our vision is to reach as many people as possible. Um, w- we've been saying that this is a playground for all beings of all ages and sizes. Um, and, you know, it's for the adults. It's for the kids. You don't need to do yoga. You don't need to have any sort of movement practice or yoga practice um, at all. And if anything too we really want to have this as a platform to offer to the locals the nationals of costa rica to have a place to experience play and experience healthy organic food um at a an accessible price so you're basically saying anyone even if you're just a visitor who's passing through costa rica uh, i know so for a couple days or a week or so by coming out here they still have a spot and they would feel welcome and there's things to do Absolutely. Absolutely. Of course. And to answer your original question, too, there is so many different versions of play. There is an infinite amount of ways to play. And yeah, we do actually have a balance beam for people to balance on. And yes, we have some gongs and crystal bowls for those who want to like vibe out in in those kinds of frequencies. And then also there's like the forest that we have where you can just sit and chill and also the just the space to to play in and be in and the garden and um, the swimming pool and just all of the different ways uh, that this land can provide for us to play. Everyone can play. (laughs) So I'm going to ask each of you, what's your favorite area of this place between the pool, the playground, the restaurant? Like what's, what's your favorite spot? I'll start with you, Mike. Uh, My favorite spot. This spot is one of our favorite spots for sure. Uh, looking up here over the mountains and the, and the hummingbirds and the parrots flying by at sunset is, is just amazing. Um, the pool when it's hot and the garden at 5 a.m. You know, it's really peaceful to, to, to work in the garden. Um, and then the training ground. I mean, there, I don't have a favorite. Yeah, the whole place encompasses something um, at a different time for you, you know. So um, my favorite place is everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, ditto, ditto that. Um, Yeah, the garden is my favorite place at 5 a.m. when I'm praying and wanting to connect with myself and the earth. And um, in here, when I want to journal and get reflective, the playground, when I want to play and get out of my head. It's such a beautiful place to be um, when I get in my head to just drop out of the burden and into the body and play. Um, And then the pool all the time. That Mm -hmm. natural pool is... uh, has been a lot of work so we <laughs> tell us what tell us about a natural pool real quick Ooh, okay yeah so um our natural pool is um give it to him baby <laughs> so, tell us about the natural pool mike yeah so we have a natural water pool that has a filtration system that is a pond so the pond ecosystem with the plants and lava rocks filters the water and it's gravity fed back into the po- uh, back into the pool and then we have an eight hour system where basically it, it filters that way it sucks out of the pool into the pond and then back through into the pool and and yeah it's taken uh it's taken quite a while we've had a lot of problems but we we figured it out and it's clean very clean today and it's running smooth it's a great place for the frogs to to make their tadpoles at certain times so that's been fun um, and just, yeah, working with the, working with it in it, in this natural habitat and all of the things that want to come into that natural water and live, you know, we've had some turtles over there, the dragonflies drink the water at night, the, the, the butterflies, like it's just, it's an amazing uh, little ecosystem that we've created. So, um, the work is worth it for sure. Where did you come up with the playground setup? How long did you think about that? Was there a lot of thought put into it? I'm going to put this here and that there are... 
did it come to you pretty quickly? Like who designed the playground site? Yeah, the again, we we kind of did it together. I definitely wanted to do the this those um, traversing rings that we'll see after. That was something that that came kind of birthed out of my mind. And then just little different aspects. Lori wanted the balance beams, and then we did this other kind of balancing log thing together. And then I found some old tires to do tire flips over there. And we wanted a swing set because that's something that really uh, you know connects the adult to the child heart, which Lori was talking about earlier. And that's a big part of the playground is really to remember that child heart that lives within all of us. Uh, so we got the big old teak swing set there, and uh, it's ever evolving. We we do have a, a big teeter totter on uh, on the works as well to come soon and uh lori wants to do some like rope wall kind of climbing mesh thing and uh it's just constantly evolving it really is a playground like literally it literally is yeah. all right so it's not just a play on words to where it's like sacred playground come out here look at our pretty views and trees and gardens it's actually you could come out here and do something all right so describe this fresh water pool to us it's a uh, yeah so this is a natural stone freshwater pool which has a uh, pump that sucks the water out of the bottom, filters it up into the pond, which is behind this pool, uh, where the plants are and the lava rock and the lilies and the lotus flowers. So it filters up through there and then gravity feeds back down through into the pool and it runs that system for eight hours basically and then it shuts off and then every eight hours it, it does that system to clean the water. Nice. Waterfall it adds some nice ambiance to it. Yeah, and you can see the, the butterfly bush over here. So yeah, it's super, super jungle-fied, super relaxing. So when are you guys gonna put the big, huge diving board in for Lori to do flips off of? That's coming. Yeah, okay. And a, and, a, and a slide too. All right. So we're standing in the middle of some circle. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, this is our sacred circle where we plan to have sacred gatherings um, for people to again dive into their emotions and be in their body, um, connect to their spirit, connect to source. I'm imagining there's something with the alignment of this place. Talk me through it. Yes. Um, well, we are standing right in the center um, of the circle, which has um, offerings buried underneath all of the rocks, actually. And uh, this rock is centered to the sunrise of the winter solstice. Um, and the two doors um, hold that space between um, the sunrise and then the sunset. Um, and there are 12 big stones. Um, 12 has been a number, a sacred number of ours. The space in between the stones um, is actually infinite. It is 3.33833338333338. Um, and for us, that just resembles that we are held by infinity that we are infinite and i hope that this space can support people in remembering that power within themselves so can you explain what that is over there it looks like a fire pit of some sort yes fire pit um, and from this angle if you look it actually is an eye and um it's really special yeah it's a fire pit um where we also plan to have sacred ceremonies around the fire pray to the fire um and also just have jams um jam out by the fire nice. yeah <laughs> so we're at your garden tell us what you're up to dude <laughs> i guess you're just growing stuff Grown, Looks <laughs> grown food rich we're growing food here uh, behind us, we got some spinach that we can't see. It's on its way out, um, so it's not so pretty, so we're not going to show that. Uh, arugula, lettuce, and three different types of kale right now inside the greenhouse. Um, we also sometimes have um, a Swiss chard. Uh, we got some mint growing down there, too, as well, and usually lots of spinach, so that's what we're doing inside. I, d I don't even know what Swiss chard is, man. <laughs> it's pretty fancy, huh? It's, it's very fancy. It's a leaf-like kale, sort of. Uh, hey, out here we have jalapenos. Cherry tomatoes, Roma tomatoes, uh, basil, eggplant, uh, cucumber, and uh, sweet peppers. Uh, and usually we grow cilantro in there. That was the other thing I was thinking about. Hey, with everything going on with the pandemic and all the crazy stuff, it's brought a lot of people back to nature and the idea of like having a garden. This is a great example of how much you can accomplish without having a ton, a ton of space. Like you've got a lot going on here yeah. in a little area. Yeah, we don't talk about the pandemic on the playground, but uh, just kidding. That's what's other in there. Um, 
it was good timing too for us uh, with all this because with with things shutting down, we actually have been using the garden a lot, you know, to eat a lot of the food and with not having the same income and stuff. So, yeah, I highly recommend growing food. Um, it's a lot of work, but it's definitely worth it. Hey, so I, I take it we're at the actual playground, part of the sacred playground. Is this designed to be a course or do you just go to individual things or how do you use this thing? There's no rules. Play how you will. Play how it feels right. Um, we like to run the course. Uh, it's fun to do a little competition with somebody and run it next to each other. Um, but also each, each station can be individually used in its own special way, for sure. Lori, what do you think? Ditto. I like the whole thing. It's when you start from the beginning, it's like there's a soft gentleness to it and there's a play and mindfulness and balance and then there's strength. Um, so yeah, I like the whole thing because it's a full spectrum of play. This is pretty, this is pretty cool. I wish these were like everywhere. No, you have to come here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me take back my wish. <laughs> the lesson was so